I'm just remembering extremely bad PlayStation 1 RPG Shadow Madness that level capped at like 15. That is a it weird doesn't... level cap. Um, was it like, was the game designed around like, you know, getting stronger through other means? Like, no. Like, via, like... <laughs> okay, that's very strange. Well, you I'm can reset think... level cap in like hour three. I think it was like NES Willow that I played recently that like your maximum level is something like 21 or something. And that's it, so like strange, if you really yeah. try. Oh, yeah, I know the other place. Still love these sprites, they're still very nice. I don't hear him if it is. I thought I heard him, but yeah, no, I, I maybe don't I'm see just anybody. stupid. Yeah, I'm in that case, I'm around. just stupid. Welcome to Dazel. <laughs> Dazil. <laughs> Welcome to Dazil. Oh shit. It's where Dranka is from. <clears throat> That's a good place to be from. Uh, uh, uh. Uh... Remember the last time I was from somewhere? In a JRPG? Yeah, I was from Tucson. <laughs> By the way, was anybody reading the anime thread about this anime that apparently came out that has a wonderful idea but is completely ruined by, uh... Like its own hoardiness. I haven't oh, looked at the anime. Every in a while. anime. Uh, <laughs> okay, no. Grant, it's true. There are like eight you could be talking about specifically. I was almost certain you were talking about Shield Hero, which is an anime that's like says, "Hey, you know what's really fucking cool? Slavery. <laughs> no irony. That's actually why would that be? Why? Okay, B, why would that be considered a really cool premise that was oh. ruined by Homie? Oh, because it's an anime. It's an it's an isekai. It's also That's got not a like, cool you know, premise. Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's also is got not like cool you know. Beat. It's also got like you know, uh, fucking, I don't know, huge titted elf. I don't even know why you want to talk about this. Because <laughs> I saw Chef Lou Boo's uh, anime for Southerners on it, and it was just like both the most hilarious and most horrible thing I'd ever seen. He hated it, by the way. I'm shocked. <laughs> No one likes that show from everything I've heard, but <laughs> excellent. What are you getting up on and up on your goggle? Oh yes, apparently it's this. The concept is that a character who lives in one of the final towns in a JRPG world goes to live in the first town of a JRPG world. The idiot, absolute fool. Yes, and so he's like <laughs> level right. twelve billion compared to everybody else, and like cannot deal with. The fact that apparently he was a loser in his town, but now is like a, a super powered in this level one town. But okay, Goggle Bob, I don't like to admit this, but I have in fact read some horny materials in my life. Well, yes. Did I'm, you I'm... seriously think that this was anything other than an excuse for like him to be like the hottest shit ever with a million huge with a million girls? Uh, well, no, apparently. <laughs> It's not the, even just that's that. The only justification for anyone doing that. <laughs> Apparently, the purpose behind it is that the like mayor of the town where everybody's level one hundred is apparently referred to as Lolly Grandma, and you nope, figure that it out. Sucks. Well, there we go. <laughs> We're not going any further. So, uh, so like, so like, they already no, had the horniness no. set up. Then they just like, uh, then they just decide to go nuts with it. Yeah. Then they, they decide what this needs is the typical like fire emblem four hundred year old twelve year old, and apparently they go nuts with that. Why? Of course they did. Like, like, I, I don't want to like be too down on you, man, but you sound surprised. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is they already have a horny concept. I thought it would be normal horny, but apparently they coupled its own I did little too. fetish on top of it. I did too. Like when you described it to me, right, like, oh, exactly. I like, going. I was not prepared up for, for like, what I was going. <laughs> Tenchi Boyo two or whatever, and nope, here we are. Like, like in a way, I'm almost disappointed with myself. I have in, because... I'm going to be honest. I have infinitely less respect for Tenchi Muyo because it pretends it's not just being horny. I thought Tenchi Muyo was like one of the more honest ones. No, <laughs> it's got tons of like stupid bullshit lore about space marriage and shit. Yeah, there is a lot of like reasons things have to like, happen in that. The human, just... the human being, the way I would put it is the human being who's most responsible for the continued existence of Tenchi Muyo has spent a great deal of his life trying to make sure more of it happens. 
for like to just explore like alternate continuities and other such bullshit and it's just like what is wrong with you <laughs> So who's this dude we're hanging out with, with the glasses? Well, it's Shitan. We hung out with him at the, during the last episode, too. He's just your doctor friend who's hiding many things. <laughs> yeah, see, he had a conversation with Ellie where he was literally speaking another language. And he's like, also, don't, don't talk about everything that I do. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like, that sounds like he's doing something illegal. Like, he's Dr. Feelgood. He's the one who makes it feel all right. He, he's just doing illegal wow. stuff, but you don't know that it's illegal stuff. <laughs> Nor yeah. does it make you feel all right in any way. <laughs> oh, so he's just like a serial killer then? You or don't like know. A serial doctor? I, a serial I think that's doctor. Called... Serial doctor, the only thing I can think of for that is fucking Blackjack. <laughs> now that, that guy was definitely a serial doctor. Just sort of does things sometimes. I do think it's from time to time. It's cool. I appreciate the capacity to walk away during conversation, something that's also true in Chrono Trigger. Um, that is a really nice touch. Where you can just be like, yeah, I... <laughs> Boy, that's yeah, interesting, like, but I uh, sure don't care. <laughs> uh, that's whatever you were talking about. I'm thinking of that one on my Sonic screen cap of Sonic saying that to some lady. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a Photoshop. <laughs> But it's also true to Sonic's soul. It is extremely <laughs> true to Sonic's soul. Yeah, that, that's the kind of reason, like, what was it, the Dark Brotherhood? Like, the idea of Sonic in a JRPG just hurts my brain. <laughs> it wasn't even oh, a JRPG. That miserable. was a Bioware game. That's a bio. It's definitely, it's definitely aping jrpg though. It's definitely... Not really. It's got a lot more Bioware DNA in it than anything else. It's bad. It's extremely it's super bad. super bad. But, like, I would not argue that it's aping JRPG-ness in any fashion. I suppose. I don't like, know. It's structurally going, much like, more fucking Bioware. fetch quests. You gotta, like, find some you guys... you play a Bioware game? game? You have... Actually, you might not have. I <laughs> haven't in... I have not. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of those. <laughs> so, like, but, like, right off the bat, just as an example, this is Satan. He used to live in a random pastoral village with his wife and mute child and then he just rolls into a mechanics place and knows the exact make and model of a random gear that has showed up so he's up to I mean, something i mean if he's a good mechanic he, he should know like he's what a doctor, gears are. A mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> like what part of doctor did you understand <laughs> mechanics are part doctors. <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's at least one mechanic shop <laughs> The name, the car doctors. <laughs> Muffler yeah, doctor. Man, I would like all mechanics to be called car doctors. That would make more sense to me. It's like well, how people start shortening it to like Cockter or something, and that would be a problem. I don't think that would be a problem. I think that'd be the solution. <laughs> That's not a solution. Hey, Kelly Strum, you are muted. Oh, he's gone. He's just, he's vanished. <laughs> he went to the abyss. He just he heard you the say. Chat. He heard you say Cockter and was like, nope, I don't know why anything I don't, know it I don't want any part of it. Oh, he's back. Don't, good worry, hey, good news, Cockter. We have, Hello, testing, we testing. We have stopped talking Hello, about we Cockter. we can hear you. We can hear you. You, you stopped talking about what? Cockters. You know, cock doctors. <laughs> Wait, shit, <laughs> I fucked it up. You're <laughs> supposed to be car doctor, you fool. <laughs> no, you, know, you said cock doctors. Cockters, <laughs> and then I was like, "Well, nope, they're, they're, they're cock doctors now." <laughs> yeah, he's talking about what's broken on the gear, or whatever. Uh, kids love, blah 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 blah. <laughs> is a it, is a cocker a cocker is broken? <laughs> oh, I like that. Yes. Actually, th th you know, I give Xenogears a lot of crap for being incredibly talky, but. Part of the reason for that is they really go out of their way to justify why your JRPG hero is a JRPG hero. Cause like, you don't ever have to do that though. You, That's you a don't. Problem. But th this was like the <laughs> I late call it 90s. A problem. Like, Faye is not going to be a silent protagonist. He's like a dude that's like, well, can I just go back to town and not do this? And they're like, nope. <laughs> like, Here's the entire conversation why. Like, so, sir, uh, Faye is not a. Uh, 
who's not a silent protagonist and has taken on kind of the uh, the cloud role of being the opposite. Like his just, interior mental state is something that drives much of the plot. I don't so. think Cloud's internal mental state drove much of the plot. And I got there's to the an end. entire section where he brain broke him. <laughs> yeah, okay, but like before that, he's just like, well, whatever. I guess I'm in this gang now. For a huge part of the like, game. <laughs> Yeah. Like at one and point, the ninja just says, "Hey, let's go to Ninja Town." And um, uh, there's an entire like, fine, section, whatever. <laughs> there's entire large sections of the game where Cloud incorrectly recalls something, and oh, uh, yeah. it's like a big thing that people aren't that someone with information about it is not calling it out. Yeah, that's because um, uh, that's because Tifa was like, "Yo, what the fuck? I don't think I should get involved with this." The point I'm making is second that, like, here. <laughs> the point I am making here is that a huge portion of the intrigue of the plot of FF7 is not fully getting what's going on with Cloud. Oh yeah, and sure. What's go- not fully getting what's going on with like like in that sense of you need to make the principal protagonist if they're not going to be a stand-in for the player, they have to be one of the most interesting parts of the game. Is kind of where they went in with Square Games at this period, and sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. Yep. <laughs> See, I'm thinking oh, about uh, fucking uh, my favorite JRPG, and Vice Guys is Arcadia. arguably not uh, the core focus of Sky's Arcadia. He's just he's just a guy. Arguably, he's absolutely not. He is just the thing that causes action to occur. Yeah, he's just this guy who likes doing stuff, and every time he goes, he finds stuff to do. His entire motivation is just, this looks fun, let's, yeah, sure. We're talking about yeah, sure, I'll fight an evil empire, it sounds like a, sounds like a great weekend. <laughs> He's the shonen hero. He is definitely a shonen hero. I, is there a, is there a remake of Skies of Arcadia? Or there a is for GameCube, but that's it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, why do you say <laughs> yeah, I'm over that? I'm talking about something on modern systems in the end. No, 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 there is not. It got I think, uh, it got the delightful remake on the GameCube that um uh, where the um uh, where the uh, remake, textures though. took a t- t- textures took a little bit of a hit and the music wasn't quite as good but um uh, the models were much better and the draw distance was much better and they added some side quests which are very nice. Let's all hang out with Piesto. Yep. Let's all find out why Piesto's sad. Turns out it's cause uh cause her dad sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Skies of Arcadia is, like, along with the Lunar games, like, one of those games where I was like, yeah, I should find a way to play those games sometime. <laughs> tell you about a magical program called Dolphin after we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Very magical. The, thing, the thing that I always recommend to people like Skies of Arcadia and Lunar is that you should absolutely play Grandia. I did play Grandia, and it was good. I enjoyed it. It was made by one of the lead designers of the Lunar 1 and 2 games. Hmm. Which explains a great deal about Lunar 2 when you go from Lunar 2 to Grandia 1 So, I got to notice this. The, the doctor slash mechanic slash whatever the fuck this dude's deal is. He's a doctor. You say that. The, the copter. The copter, <laughs> yes. He, he is probably, like, Faye is literally referring to him as Dot in favor of a name. <laughs> Well, that's just that's just the term of endearment. You could call me Doc, and that wouldn't make me a doctor. It would be weird, though. Look, call me, I call you bro all the time, and you're not technically my brother. It would like you're not a doctor by any stretch. I wouldn't know where to begin with why I would start calling you Doc. Cause it's cool. Look, this is a remake of Back to the Future. It just gets a little bit off the rails. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm just imagining... Now I'm just imagining, like, Satan here sitting around talking about how this fucking camcorder is a portable television studio. (laughs) (laughs) What were you going to ask, Kelly Scrub? Or were you asking something? I forget where we started. (laughs) Oh, my God. I said something (laughs) stupid. And uh, I offended her. (laughs) Uh, uh, the last thing I, I asked was the copter. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Why did we have to come back to the copter? We have to come back to the copter. We could never escape the copter. So did you at least see you all the death flows? Uh, I don't know if it was all of them, but definitely like. If you're some definitely of them. not getting them at this rate. <laughs> so if, if I remember correctly, the uh, like the copter <laughs> was. He's he's like clearly the best character um, outside of, of like when you're doing it uh, like people fighting right. 
Uh, by or is that, is that is that is that what is that only after you get a uh, the sword? Yes. Okay. Yeah, like I said, by end game. <laughs> is the sword end game? Oh, man, it's been it's so long. Very late that he brings that thing out. I mean, it's disc two if memory serves. Like that's the big. I think that's like point. basically the start of disc two. Is he's like, well, I guess I better use this, and suddenly he's like, <laughs> world stronger. Yeah. World. <laughs> and to be clear, disc two is definitely not the halfway point of the game. <laughs> it was supposed to be. <laughs> but, yeah. I think I was supposed to get like a buggy or something. Really. All right, all right. Let's put away the oh, video just games. Like, just like FF7. Brave Star. Of course, I'm like stuck in the desert. Yeah, I like. I only remember like I forget what takes you to the next area because I just remember the falling into the dungeon with Bard. Right. Yeah. No, that's definitely coming. But I, I think I have to like activate some dumbass flag like. Yeah, there's something sort of else happened in the yeah. I mean, I gotta say, for all the, the shit that some people give to, like, glowing paths and, like, this is what you're supposed to do next, it really does make there's like, a lot quick easier. reference point. Like, those are, like, a lot of RPGs will have, like, a quest log. Like, you should go talk to X. And it's like, yes, yeah, some people are going to complain about, like, holding your hand or some bullshit. But, I mean, that's way better than, well, go talk to literally everyone in town and figure out which one's the flag. Yeah, like those are awful. Like, <laughs> I just, oh man, I, yeah, I don't mind. Perfect. Like, uh, I, I feel like, I feel like there's like a fine line to walk because there are games about exploration that I totally love. Breath of the Wild says hi, where the entire like fun for me is to just wander around the world and see what I can find. And, and I do the have thing to is say, the world is always giving you context for where you need to go. It's just yeah, like, about to go out is painstakingly designed to have things that you can find just by looking around with your eyes. There's no, there are very rarely moments when, like, you need to find something that's just nondescript or otherwise, like, just like everything else. It's very rare that you're confused about where to go. It's always about getting there. Yeah, it's always about getting there. Speaking Nobody. of which, <laughs> that's, like, that's like every time I play something that's open world-ish, that's not Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I got the same problem. <laughs> it's like, why is this fucking, like, waist-high wall <laughs> blocking that my was, let me jump over That everything. was my number one problem with Hyrule Warriors. It was funny because I felt like I was, like, living in the skin of Breath of the Wild. But the joke of it was, like, there'd be, like, a slight, like, one of the final battles, there was a carriage overturned, and I was like, my entire army could not deal with this goddamn carriage. And you like, had the entire army at that point. They give you panic shots of the entire army. Right, and, like, on the other side of it, like, Zelda's on fire, and it's like, could you please just let me through this carriage? Like, you can, like, get just walk around. You can, like, get car over, and you can't get an entire fucking army to overturn a carriage. Yeah. That's fucked up. And, like, back in Breath of the Wild, like, you'd be able to, like, freeze time, hit yourself in the ass really hard, and fly over it. Like, that would happen. I think that's in Zelda's skill set. But I never yeah. played her because she annoyed me. I, I Not agree. the character. The character was very good. But her combat, her combat was just so fucking frustrating. Wait, whose combat? Zelda's in Hyrule I Warriors. I really, I, I mean, I mentioned this in the article, I really enjoyed her like second form but her initial thing was like i don't even know what's happening yeah like yeah her second form was more tolerable i didn't it never really gelled with me either but um uh her first one was just uh irritating as hell i just didn't every time the game made me play i was like nope i'm just gonna <laughs> clutch the link and have the wrecking ball run over and destroy everything like you do Yeah, I gotta not... say, I really dig the sprite work in this game. These are some seriously good uh, PSX era spriting. That said, I do love how, like, when you, the screen scrolls up, that one guy's entire body just sort of separates at his head. <laughs> yeah, he's just like he's just like decapitated every other frame. You know, it happens. No big deal. Yeah, no, just let it happen. Yeah, just let it happen. Ethos. 
let it, let it, ro- let it wash over you. I love that I'm currently on a quest to find out who owns this car. Oh, my car! Say like, hello? Anybody here? It says it's first rent finds the car. person who will rent us this buggy. Whatever, man. Shut up. Old JRPGs are really... Like, I would kill for a button that's just like, start shouting. <laughs> hey, hey whose car is this? Do you do rentals? Huh? What What are you looking... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's loaded in a minute. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm taking right next to this town. How come we couldn't see this? <laughs> because, because it just happened in the last 20 seconds while you were running around looking for cars. All these cranes just rolled up and started pulling out a giant fucking robot. It's the, uh, this, is the, this is the sequel to Dude, Where's My Car? This oh. is the sequel to Dude, Where's My Car? <laughs> now I'm just imagining Whoa, a sequel to that. Or, now I'm just imagining a sequel to that fucking movie, but like written and performed for right now and it's all just really depressing because they're that old and this is still happening. <laughs> this is still happening. That's the actual Where's point. my car? I just turned 40 last week and I'm still partying every night because I have no meaningful relationships in my life. <laughs> I now have 500 tattoos that say some variant of bro, of bro or dude. <laughs> I have never actually watched Dude, Where's My Car? Neither have I. Seven minutes of it because it was on TV once. I, I well, saw it once on, like, I, uh, like, I want to say, like, a high school bus trip or something around high school. That like the exact place to see it. I, I think I, I, I only... I, all I've seen <laughs> from it is the trailer. <laughs> that's enough. Sometimes that's enough. Sometimes that's all you need. I love that it's a I cultural touchstone that all of us just have a vague idea happened. It happened it's something about stoners and looking for your car. That's it. If memory serves, like, it wound up having, like, a Bill and Ted-esque, like, sci-fi thing. And it was kind of the thing where what? kind of, that like... weird. Yeah, well, it was kind of the thing that I was watching in a car or bus or whatever. And I may or may not have been falling asleep and imagined a better movie. I don't know. If anybody ever saw that movie, please let me know. I'm going to ask Wikipedia. Oh, you know, I do have to say this. Uh, face the mu- Bill and Ted Face the Music, actually shockingly good. Oh, agree. I mean, I'm not that surprised. Oh, is that, that, that's the one that just came out last year, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the one that just came out. I don't know. I, I, my, I had, like non-existent expectations for him because it was a 30 it was a sequel to a movie from 30 years ago but uh no no they pulled it off it was do fun I, do i have the car now is that what happened is the car just missing god this game really needs to give me a glowy little map do i need to look things up now yes okay give me a minute i'm busy looking up the thought of dude where's my car <laughs> <laughs> Look up the plot faster. Uh... Okay, I think I can go in the desert now. I don't know. Hope for the best. If I get lost again, I'm going to be so pissed off. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. Flag activated. There are robots in the desert. The desert is full of robots! Evil robots! No, they seem to be fine robots. Dude, there's no such okay, thing. Okay, I, I got really bored of looking at this, of reading this fat thing and skipped a paragraph, and suddenly I'm reading about cultists. So about I don't cultists. know what happened. And dude, apparently. where's my car? Well, I guess yes, we're apparently. just going to have to watch it. Does anybody no, know I mean, I guess. Pirate television stations? <laughs> Several of these things just sound like they're just deeply offensive, so maybe not. We're just but... not, we're not telling anybody to go to duckduckdo.com and then search, dude, where's my car, comma, putlocker. But we are suggesting it. Uh, but we're not telling not... you not to do that either. No, I'm not telling you to not do that because it sounds like a lot of this probably aged very poorly and it's quite offensive, but... Oh, for sure. All movies from that era age terribly. Society had different values then, or at least more white people making things. 
more horrible, horrible white people. Okay, somehow this turns out, okay, you weren't wrong about there being aliens. Something, what the fuck? <laughs> like I said, if I imagined it, I would equally believe it. Oh, this is getting into some weird-ass fetish shit. <laughs> or did the five alien women merge to become a beautiful giantess plaid in a purple bra and miniskirt? She devoured <laughs> on the alive in front of Chris. What the fuck? <laughs> Look, sometimes... Sometimes you have to find a way to turn your a weird giant fetish into a frenzied display of power. <laughs> I feel like the giant fetish is probably one of the more explainable fetishes. I don't know. <laughs> I played Ocarina of Time at the wrong moment in your childhood. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, I won't pretend I understand, but I ain't here to shame people either, so. I am. Fuck you, giant lovers. <laughs> Can we just name the stream? I won't. I don't understand, but I'm not here to shame people. <laughs> I think you should. Don't be a dick, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> the giant, You're right, the I'm giant, sorry. If you're into giant, giant, giant fucking, anyone. that's cool. I'm the not giant gonna people hate. Hurting anyone. The giant people ain't hurting anyone. Uh, looks like you're getting abducted by aliens. Uh, <laughs> Just like in Harold. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Just like in Dudes Were My Car. Dudes Were My Car, there it is. I almost said Harold Kumar go to White Castle, which is a completely different movie. <laughs> <laughs> And it's kind of the same audience for a slightly later time, but yeah. I was going to say Pineapple Express, which is also aimed at the exact same audience. <laughs> so they just keep making the same movie every, like, six years or so. Have you ever noticed how not movies movie. were funny? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not the exact same movie. It's more like a crime thriller, but also a weed thriller. I think it was, like, the moment Seth Rogen realized who he truly was. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the answer was weed. <laughs> the answer was weed. He was the guy that would be in your weed movie. <laughs> Apparently he's actually a very hard worker, despite um, uh, being very deliberately and calculatedly high all the time. <laughs> you gotta be if you're gonna survive being deliberately and calculatedly high all the time. Yeah, pretty much. And apparently, this is what he's also the reason why most of Kevin Smith's more recent movies have been just terrible. Wait, why? Okay, I don't. Oh, I don't feel like Kevin anyone Smith. but Kevin Smith needs to blame for that. But okay. yeah, no, I, I'd be interested. No, 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 no. no, no. This, there's a the story involved. here, and it's kind of hilarious. Um, Kevin Smith didn't work uh, with Seth Rogen until I think Zack and Mary make a porno, which oh, is a bad movie. Don't watch it. Fish. Yeah, 2006 ish. But um, even though he was like the guy who you would think of as, oh yeah, he's probably always high, he actually had never smoked because he was too much of a coward until he met Seth Rogen and discovered that Seth Rogen was still an incredibly hard worker despite, you know, being high all the time. So the thing is, I so wouldn't he, say Emma, that... so, so he asked Seth Rogen to share his weed. And Seth was like, sure, buddy, whatever, it's all cool. And he never felt more creative in his life. And next thing you know, he was making a movie about a dude who gets made into a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, you say that, but at the same time, that still feels like, quality-wise, a completely lateral move. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, kind of to read how him. like clerks, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't like the affected Gen X-ness of Kevin Smith movies in general. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I mean, I have to say that I... I was like the right level of teenager to fall for Kevin Smith in the first place. And I feel like there is something like about I'm absolutely not the audience for them. I'm too too young for that shit. Like Yeah, no, I can see a that. Very affected Gen Xness. I, I do feel like clerks really nailed a certain thing about the time that I feel like got adopted by like literally everything else and pretty much every sitcom that ever existed from and that for sure. Girl. That's what struck me about Clerks the first time I saw it, because I heard right, people talk about it for And I was just like, this is just an episode of a TV show, only weirdly long. <laughs> yes. Are all the Clerks TV series? Oh, of course, the, the yeah, animated was. series is awesome. Apparently, no, I'm not talking about the animated one, buddy. No, 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 there wasn't anything other than the animated one. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about the live action one, whether you like it or not. No, no. We're not doing that. I don't have to do that. We no, don't have to do that. Bear is driving and calling it back. 
Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, I know what you're doing. <laughs> What? Did this guy just get a free motorcycle? Yes! Free motorcycle! Like, this is also a thing that keeps happening in Xeno games, where the main character gets a motorcycle for no reason. Because motorcycles are fucking cool. <laughs> Xeno Saga featuring Cosmos and her bitch in space motorcycle. <laughs> like, why does a robot need a motorcycle? Because it's cool. The real question was why Shion didn't design Cosmos to have a built-in motorcycle to begin with. I, because why she's wouldn't a coward. You? I know, that's the point I'm making. Like, why didn't she just do that to begin with and save us all some time? Oh, yeah, well, I because mean, she's she a coward. She's already like a million pounds. <laughs> well, yeah, you don't want to make her more heavy than that. You, like, oh, fall no, through an, a extra, an extra 200 pounds, what will we do? If, if you think a space motor is like only weighs 200 pounds, buddy, I got news for you. Even all of the already shared parts she has, she basically just needs wheels on her limbs. <laughs> Big weights! If it's a space motorcycle, it doesn't matter how heavy it is, because they're in space! <laughs> <laughs> you would be surprised. No, I know, but it's, that's not how it works. I'm aware that, like, the mass means that it has inertia that's affected, so it doesn't matter. So, so whether or not, like, it weighs as much on the ground or in space is irrelevant because it's about how much energy it takes to get it in motion. I get it. I'm just saying, though. <laughs> Way to go, Einstein. <laughs> rock and roll. Oh, Turns out I went to high school, too. <laughs> oh, look at this nerd. I blew up on Twitter today with a. No, you five, do that all the time. I, I shit you not, a five-year-old tweet thread. <laughs> what? It was it was the one where I made fun of Assassin's Creed because I looked at the name and said, "Wait a second. Oh yeah, the ass. This has the word <laughs> ass in it twice. Does that even really count as making fun of it? You just went into a, like a weird dissociative fugue. <laughs> I did. Yes. That was five. Somebody years actually ago? made a video for yeah, Ass and Vinny coming down on the PS5. <laughs> in 2069. <laughs> that one impressed me. I felt I felt pretty happy to see that one. <laughs> oh, also, I found out that the that the, 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 uh, the share zone blocked me. I have no idea why. <laughs> yeah, why? Why is that? Like, I don't there, know. Like a hint? No. <laughs> oh well, I think now you lost. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like. Weird, like, memes and stuff, isn't it? Or... Yeah, the weirdest memes. They were never funny. They were never that funny. I remember they had exactly one thing, which was just, man, February's a fake month. 29, eight days, that's suspicious. That's literally the only one I appreciate on any level. <laughs> I don't know, like, as somebody who considers themselves like someone, I, like, in a weird way, I feel like I produce content for the internet like you know like like it sounds like it's a assembly do. line or something but you it's do, weird yes. to think of like i've done all these random articles and it's weird to think that somebody would ever say there was one good thing <laughs> the end <laughs> oh. <laughs> never mind the most important thing is happening <laughs> i'm gonna be paying attention what am i missing did we just Darth, get the big Darth robot? Darth Vader decided to show up. Yeah, Darth Vader's here. Oh, hi, Darth Vader. Uh, I'm just, I'm just reading the plot about this Kevin Smith walrus movie. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <awful>. <laughs> Look at this mother. Look at this dude. I like the idea that Zeno Gears is showing up by Tusk. <laughs> Let's get you to the walrus man way faster. <laughs> this transition, though, what the hell? <laughs> we got a lot of money. We got a lot of use out of that swinging cross animation. <laughs> yeah, God. And also the blood splattered also child is like yeah, Final Fantasy splattered... 16, eat your heart child. out. Oh, God. I hate it when my inner child shows up and he's just a little dick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I know who I was when I was 11. That guy sucked. <laughs> This, true, this yeah. whole part of the story. <laughs> Ridiculous. Here we go again. Here we go, yo. 
Here we go. We got... I just love that Zatanna's oh, 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 just kind of oh, like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, his name's... That's how his name is pronounced? It could be anything. <laughs> it's what your heart Error. feels. Well, I might have my my heart read as Satan, so he's the devil. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. That is the one thing that doesn't make any sense. That's the Wait. one option you could have chosen that doesn't have anything to do with how it's written. I mean, you just kept Gagabout pronounced it Satan. Yes, because it's C I T A N. Yeah, Satan, Satan. That, that's, <laughs> no, those are different. <laughs> no, they're same. Okay, well, whatever. Here's this weirdo. He's ranting about stuff he's not going to explain for quite a long time. Do you desire the power? He's basically going to... He's basically given the You Are the Chrono Trigger speech from Chrono Cross. <laughs> I mean, even worse than that, like... I, I'm trying to think what this deeply reminds me of. Where it's like the villain is just constantly, constantly taunting the hero, like... You're gonna do something bad, you're gonna do something bad, I'm not touching you, you're gonna do something bad. It's gonna happen. Do you desire the power? Are you level 60? I mean, you are level 60. Uh oh. <laughs> Bongo spent a l not Bongo, Goggle Bob spent a lot of time off camera grinding and then yeah, somehow that's exactly what happened. 30 minutes. <laughs> that sounds like something we would say. That's good. Your basic nature remains unchanged. Like I'm really I'm, sad that there isn't enough voice acting in here. I'm is that like experience. your basic? Is, is he like trying to do that you know bullshit JRPG villain thing where he's just like, why are you doing bad things? It's because you would also do bad things. Kind of yeah. bad. You're gonna destroy God. You know that. You're gonna kill him. You're gonna kill God. You're gonna kill him. God is dead, he remains dead, we have killed him, that was holiest of all holiest, his blood is death beneath our knives. Is your name Faye or <laughs> what, what, water was, which, what water have we to clean ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> and just, they just rub it in with the you know my father? Yeah, uh, <laughs> just, yeah. Here, I love it. You, my father. You mean my dad? <laughs> my dad. <laughs> That's a beautiful line. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, this guy's one of those things. Like, I saw a lot of Star Wars before I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is just straight up, just solid. Like, oh no, I'm not your dad. I mean, I killed your dad. I mean, uh, whatever. <laughs> They don't have an Obi-Wan to tell him, oh, this man killed your dad, so they just have to have him do both of those things. I mean, Satan really could have done that, too. He I mean, could have, but he does The dude does not mind lying at all. <laughs> it's, it's weird, in fact, that they didn't just shift that role onto him. I mean, they did in every other way. It's like, hey, you want to go buy some droids? Sure. Can't believe this is Xenogears Episode 5. <laughs> Yeah, God, they're fighting so hard. I mean, we always did wonder what Star Wars would be like if they had giant robots. But I mean, like, this would have also been written, like, right after uh, the Star Wars movies went back into theaters for the special editions before the, uh, before the, uh, the prequels. So, you know, this is like, guys. Oh, Kamehameha. <laughs> yeah, remember how it did like one HP of damage in the last uh, stream? And things well, that changed. That changed a lot. <laughs> Item gained eyeball. Oh, I wanted that eyeball. <laughs> eyeball. Like, I need this. I always wonder, like JRPG heroes that are constantly getting loot that is monster body parts. I wonder how they know. Like, I'm gonna take this part. What part? What part of this is worthwhile? To me? <laughs> Like, pelt is straightforward, but giant worm eyeball? Don't know. Yeah, the eyeball's weird. I don't know that I would want to take that. I don't know where I would keep it. Yes. Yeah, that's I don't want to put it with everything else. It'll just, like, get crushed and bleed eyeball juice all over things. I, I, by the way, I do have to say that since it's fresh in my mind, that is one thing I appreciated about uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Because in the original Breath of the Wild, it made absolutely no sense that I could only hold two swords with 7,000 pieces of ham. 
whereas in Breath of the <laughs> in Calamity or whatever, it's like, well, we do have an entire army lugging around our crap, so that makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> Like, yeah, I've got like I've got twenty two diamonds in my inventory. There's just a guy who's responsible for that. Yeah, we have like a, we have like a cart behind all this stuff, yeah. just carrying it around for us. You know, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, that I absolutely believe. I'm cool with that. 